We're in Universal Studios Hollywood to catch you guys up on what's happening around the park. We'll check in on the crowds, try some new food, jump on a couple of rides, and of course look in on that new construction and give our thoughts on what Universal is doing and where it's going. We're in Hollywood. Man, this is, <laughs> I picked a perfect day to come to Universal Studios. It is glorious out here right now. This is the kind of day that, this is the reason why people live in Southern California. Fantastic. Almost perfectly blue skies. A little bit of cloud, actually the clouds look even better in this case. Just a hint of wind, mid 70s, absolute perfection. Before we head into the park proper, let's take a quick look at the board here. I don't ever get to do this. Let's just see how busy things are. Harry Potter, 60 minutes. I was expecting or hoping for less than that actually. Mario Kart is at 100, oh boy. So it's still, according to the board, fairly busy here even though we're in a routine January day. Well, kind of routine. It is a Saturday and it's about one o'clock. So I tried to intentionally pick you know, a point in time where I would have the optimal crowds because what I want to find out today, as is usually the case, measuring the temperature of the crowds here at Universal, I, especially in relation to it, you know, the, the holidays that we just went through where it was just bonkers busy. Already I can tell that there's a lot more space out here. I feel much freer, you know, it's not quite as packed, but the queues are still full. To be expected though, because as we've said in uh, various reports, there's not a lot of street atmosphere here. There's not a lot of things to do outside of the attractions. So, you know, even though the crowd is less, or the park is less busy, they're still gonna fill up the queues for the most part. You're gonna have, you know, some that are gonna be lighter than others, but I'm expecting to see, now that I've seen that board especially, a fairly typical day. Here's another construction update for you. It looks like they've taken the scrim and scaffold down out in front of the shops here. So I'm guessing that they're gonna keep the same theme, the same sort of atmosphere that they've had here. Matter of fact, this is, this is one of your actors right there, if I'm not mistaken. She would normally be up here in one of those windows conversing with guests. I love this bit that they do here. I absolutely love it. It's a great way to start your day at the park. Are you the third wheel today? Are you the third wheel? Are you the third wheel? I know what it's like. I was the third wheel doing the whole first movie. Yeah. Oh, well, let me take the picture. I'm ready to take the picture. Thank you, Chief. Good heavens, look at that. We were here just a month ago. You couldn't see anything over that fence. Now we've got vertical construction. They're vertical. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to go investigate. I think we're gonna have to look over these walls. There's, I mean, there's just equipment staring at me right here in, the, in my face. Look at that thing right there. It's almost unreal. It almost doesn't seem real. It's like right there. <laughs> what, and what they're building, if I'm not mistaken, we'll, we'll get a better look, but I think that's gonna be the queue that we're looking at there. That's what they're building on the other side of that wall. <laughs> Sorry, I had to stop for some Frankenstein's monster in the Bride of Frankenstein. He seems to be mystified by cell phones. This, by the way, is a fantastic walk around character, meet and greet type situation. They're great. And it, seeing this makes me very interested, very excited for the potential of the classic monsters land that they're building at Epic Universe. I really, really want to see more of this. Can you imagine just the whole land of this kind of thing happening? Dracula, Frankenstein, what's Frankenstein doing? <laughs> she seems, to, <laughs> this is great. I am very interested, very hyped, very curious. Epic universe, we're talking 2025. The hype that has been building up for that park for the past well, it'll be six years, maybe? They started talking about that back in 2019, I feel like. Do I have that right? By the time you get there, you talk about hype. 
that place is going to explode. It's going to burst at the seams. Wow. Look at all they have done since we were here last. What was it? Uh, day after Christmas. So it's been not even a month. No, it's been a month. It's been almost exactly a month. Good gravy. That's incredible. You know what? I got to switch cameras. This that we're looking at right here was, it was dirt. It was almost entirely dirt. Oh my. How is Disney supposed to compete with this? It is just otherworldly how fast they're working. And I can't even, I can't even figure out what's happening where. I'm pretty sure though, that is, that's the building that was poking out over the wall when we walked by. Uh, that's, I'm pretty sure that's gonna wind up being the queue. Interior probably, and this might be, could that be the launch right there? Are they building the platform on which the roller coaster vehicles launch and return? Just looking at this frame right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I can see thirteen guys over here. And oh, by the way, this whole thing is happening as well. There's three more guys down there. Oh my god, I'm having so much vertigo right now. What are they building here? Look at that. So that looks like to be some kind of, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Support footing. But there's also a path. It's going to the other one. So that maybe that's not what that is. I'm gonna need some help from the uh, construction lights out there. Let me know what's happening. If you're a constructionizer, tell me what they're building there. That's all gonna be below grade too, I, I would think. My goodness. Just the brains that it must take to get to. I'm going to have to get over there, get a view from there, and you can actually also get a view, a kind of fun view from the exterior queue over there by Bowser's Castle. We might have to go down there as well to see how things look from there. It's interesting. But uh, when I was, <laughs> the way that these, all of this equipment is just kind of perched on this terrain, like how do they even get it around is what I want to know. Like, where does that, where does that go from here? <laughs> they got it there, now how do they get it out? That thing, where does that go from here? Oh, I hear some work happening, you can hear it. There's a guy down there. Oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm afraid of heights, you guys. I'm freaking out, oh. There's a guy in there now. What are they going to do? Are they going to lift something right now? They're moving into position. Nothing happening with the crane, so I thought I'd come over here to the escalators to see what I could see. There's the, that's that platform we were seeing them build from the other side. I feel like I missed whatever it was that they were doing with that crane, because that's, is that where we left it? I can't recall. I'm trying to now picture as I look at the, what I believe to be the launch platform, I'm trying to imagine where they might send this thing, because it's, it's going to launch in that direction, I think. Could they send it over? The escalator there, because that's the dirt there. Well, you know what? We'll check on that in a second. But I feel like they could they could build a support there, send it that way, and then down the now side of the mountain there. Because it's supposed to go all the way down to the fire department, which is where those trams are now. They're going to make a right turn here in a second. Also, there was no smoke in it. 
as you step and it's going to go all the way down stand in the center of the step close to uh, Jurassic World avoiding the sides face forward at all times when on the escalator. and then they're going to set <laughs> my goodness and then they set it back up the hill and you arrive back at the station drifting and remembering your family the whole way <laughs> so much for, I mean, we're getting some kind of a break today. We're getting a little bit of a break with the crowds. It's not like it was through Christmas, but this is still more than busy. <laughs> Plenty of people here. My gosh. This, I mean, I'm definitely going to have to wait till 3 o'clock to enjoy any attractions today, I think. The mummy is presently at 50 minutes. It could take you 50 minutes just to walk the... <laughs> Mario Town right now. This is just a heck of a lot of people. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's go check in on Jurassic World before we head back to 60 minutes. Woo. 60. You get the feeling that Universal has been making just a ton of dough here at Universal Studios, especially since they opened Harry Potter Town and then Super Mario Nintendo Land World. Uh, especially since they opened, they, they have just seen the, the, the printing money. And this is why they are just tripling down on their expansions. They've got parks planned in Texas. Uh, they've got the thing going on in Las Vegas with the, the round the year uh, horror night type situation. Now they're looking at uh, in England plus Epic Universe, which is going to just, like I said, that's going to blow up with all the hype they've been getting. They are just full speed ahead and they're just plowing through that. They're committing all kinds of money and man hours and creativity that uh, I just, it's just spectacular. It's so impressive, you know, to, to see a company hit the gas like that as I try to make my way back to the Super Nintendo world. I know it's fun and it's easy to compare that to what Disney's doing or not doing. But one thing that I think people lose sight of is that the gap was so large already between when they started this when they started let's say with uh harry potter town the gap was so big that they had it was easy for them to to close that gap initially plus they had very low expectations you know the, their parks were not very good the attractions were not very good so it was easy for them to overcome this the the, the mark the bar that they had set for themselves so you know as they get better and better they start making better attractions yes Disney was already there. Disney was already at the top. And it's hard, how do you, it's like, I don't know if this is a proper comparison, but let's say if you want to lose weight, they say that you know, the first 20 pounds you try to lose is easy, it's the last five that are hard. It's that last 10% or whatever that, uh, you know, that, that's hard to, to improve upon. So it's not as easy for Disney to just say, okay, we're just gonna spend a bunch of money and go make a great park. They've already, they're already near that max level. So I'm more, I'm more willing to be patient with Disney in that regard for that reason. But still, it is, it is cool. It is really neat to watch Universal just take the bull by the horns and take control of their theme park destiny. Your friend never will get left behind for the power of the rainbow will shine bright. Bubble like your hair. Since your braids are weaved intricately. General Morshower, stand by. Autobot Bumblebee, this is General Morshower. Do you copy? I hear you <laughs> What is it, General? We detected Decepticon activity in no. Sector 7. Sector 7. We need you to report ASAP. Bumblebee. Morshower out. General Morshower needs you. Run in the back. Take the shuttle downstairs. Good luck. Hollywood, everyone. Make some noise for Lieutenant Bumblebee! Master, Mr. Baby. Bumblebee? Uh, I have a feeling these humans will guard this area for us. I see the potential in all of them. I have witnessed their capacity for courage. And although we are built worlds apart, like us, there is more to you than meets the eye. But alas, transform and roll See you there. Grab your end. Goodbye, my friends. I will not forget you. 
Go inside. Bumblebee and I are headed there now. Good luck, freedom fighters. <laughs> that is so good. That's been around a long time, too. And every time I see it, I'm like, oh my god, that's amazing. That meet and greet, is, it, it's even better when they get Megatron out there. That's incredible. That's so good. Speaking of Super Nintendo World, let's go check it out. I'm expecting more mayhem once we get in here. This actually might be the, the slowest I've ever seen Super Nintendo World. I just walked by the queue, it's 90 minutes. There's still, the wait list is open at Toadstool Cafe. Single Rider, the back of the queue at Single Rider is a, a reasonable spot. I'm gonna go check it out. We won't, I'm gonna show you the whole ride through, but I wanna find out what the, what the wait time is right now in Single Rider and then get some of that coverage of the Fast and Furious construction. Hitting the back of this queue at 2.05. Oh, there it is. There's the, there's the platform and the queue that they're building right there at the top of the frame. And then over here, that's where the crane is that we saw from Super Silly Funland. Can't really see anything from here, but you can find some more precariously perched. Well, it's actually the same precariously perched crane right there in the center. This will be a cool view of just to see the roller coaster when it's live, when it's actually running. I would love to see how that looks. I'm one of those nerds who likes to see the attractions happening around the park. Like, I don't like the, they're fun. Rise is fun, Runaway Railway is great. Probably my favorite attraction, but if I had to choose, I'd like to see the ride happening as I'm walking through the park. It's a really cool experience for the guest. Not the guest necessarily on ride, but the guest in the park. And it adds an element, it adds a bit of energy and uh, something that you can't get when you put everything inside of a box. So being able to see the roller coaster running around out there on the side of that hill, that would be, that would be kind of amazing. I mean, it's a bit of a discount, but it's no bargain. For almost 50 minutes, single ride, 50 minutes. So yeah, it was uh, almost 50 minutes, single rider. Like I said, you know, you're getting a break. It's not 90. And by the way, you can trust that 90. All of my experience to date, has not suggested any sort of situation where they're fudging the wait times because there's no there's no uh, fast pass here, so there's no there's no reason to fudge it. Uh, so that 90 was probably legit. We just you know, we say 40 minutes, but it's kind of it's kind of a grind getting through that queue. Good news is I got my high score, 160 on this effort. The trick for me this time was being much more particular. Don't spam your shells. You only get so many shells. So you've got to use them. You've got to budget those shells. And then just pay attention to where you look. Pay attention to where you look and then fire. It's three o'clock, so before we head up to the main lot, let's let's do one attraction down here. I can start using my express lane now. And I think oh look at that. Mummy has dropped down to 25 since we what happened? Mummy says 25. Did everybody go home? I'm not, well, I, I'm, 
I guess by better judgment, I'm gonna go enjoy Transformers because I was so thrilled to, to be seeing Optimus Prime and Bumblebee earlier. Oh, look, and there's Megatron. That uh, I want to I want to play a little Transformers. What do you need a phone for? As if you have any friends. The bleach tips aren't helping. and I fought, would I lose? Do you even know what the Transformers are? Uh, get out of here. You're just a social media hound looking for content. Oh, damn. You're basically a male Kenya. <laughs> Boy, Megatron can cook. <laughs> He's got something for everybody. Uh, okay, so Mummy was 25. But uh, Transformers is 70, so we are going to get a little break with our express link. Thank you. How much Q do I don't think I've ever done express link uh, on Transformers, so I have no idea how much of the Q we get to see, which so far isn't a lot. We're just backstage at a mall right now. And if you've ever walked at a mall, then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we missed all of the queue. That's kind of that's kind of fun. I like the queue here. Okay, having some difficulty with my lab right here, moment, so hopefully it's working now. But if it's not, then you're gonna get some really crappy audio going forward. Way down. 
Optimus! Power drop. Heroes fight! Your war is with me! Actually, that was probably the most I think I've ever enjoyed that attraction. I almost, I almost was like, okay, that's not bad. <laughs> that was almost not bad. I still have no idea what's going on. There's still way too much happening. A lot of movement and the screens are weird and I don't understand why it needs to be 3D to begin with, but um, that was, that was, I, I, get, I get why people like it, I do. In the same way I get why people like Star Wars or Star Tours. Before we get into our next attraction, I stopped at Hollywood and Dine to get some lunch earlier. They got a new menu there and I wanted to check that out. All I wouldn't die. Let it be known. I really, really want to like this. Just saying, I, I can't help it if I'm pessimistic about the food at Universal. Last time we had a good run. I got the barbecue chicken sandwich and uh, here's a little bit of that barbecue chicken. It's like barbecue chicken. It's not bad. It's a little on the chewy side. As for the bite from this burger or sandwich, there's like a, a mix of what looks like secret sauce and ketchup with slaw, which is an interesting combination. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. It's not bad. It, it's just, it's just kind of ordinary. Nothing really stands out. The bun is a little cold. The chicken is warm-ish. The sauce is okay, you know, the mix of uh, what I think is like a secret sauce and ketchup, which is weird, again. At least that's what it looks like. Let's get a bite with a, the with a pickle in there. I do like pickles on my chicken sandwiches, so maybe this will improve things. It's fine, it's fine, it's okay. But I would definitely choose something else on future visits. I, and I don't know what to expect from the other choices. Looking at the menu, they have a chili cheese dog, a turkey sandwich, uh, uh, looks like a, a soup bowl. I, I, I can't, it's far from me. I'm trying to go by memory. I mean, I suppose I could try those as well. They're calling this their winter, their winter menu. So I don't know how long this is gonna last. I don't know how long, you know, we're gonna keep on this menu, but uh, if they'll change it for the summer. But I will say it's at least an improvement over the ramen. The ramen was, was not very good when I got that here before. Oh, that was so disappointing. But there you go. That's one test down at Hollywood and Dine. Let's get back to the park. I was actually going to take a run at Waterworld today, but it looks like it's closed for a refurb, sign says. Uh, close today, expectation is that it'll be back on February 10th. So I think I'm going to try to do something that I have never done before <laughs> at Universal Studios. Honestly, I didn't quite fell up on lunch. I'm gonna go try to find a snack. Just something random and fun to eat that isn't at Harry Potter Town because I had half a mind to go get a butter beer, but I may still do that. But I wanna try to, I wanna, I wanna go test Europe over here maybe or something like that. See if I can't find something fun to eat. Like I've never been in any of these places, none of them. I've never been, I've never been in the French street bistro where they have sweets, bakery, and coffee. I mean, come on. Hey, 
I've said hi to so many cast members here today, or team members, that uh, watch the show. I think I'm going to try something in the French bistro. You go to France, you got to get a crepe, right? <laughs> so that's what I did. I got the strawberry chocolate crepe. They have a banana and Nutella crepe also. There she is. I'm not, I'm not sure if this looks correct or not. I have only had one crepe in my life and that was at Disneyland Paris in France. But I don't remember what it was like, nor do I know if that was a good one or not. But here goes nothing. Cheers. Kind of, kind of meh. It's mostly the strawberry that I'm tasting. The crepe itself is warm to cool. Not getting a lot of chocolate so far. The strawberries are okay. Uh, it's sweet enough. The texture of the crepe itself is, I mean, it's okay. Like I said, I don't know what, what it's supposed to be like, if it should have a, you know, a crispier texture to it, I'm not sure. It's definitely not crispy, not in the least. But again, I'm getting mostly, mostly just strawberry. This is hard to eat. It's not bad. Oh no, I think I would have rather <laughs> got a hot butterbeer. Speaking of which, I'm not going to because I decided to get the cafe latte here as well. I feel like you couldn't, you can't get a crepe in France without also getting, you know, a cup of coffee, a cafe latte with it. It's actually not bad. Not very strong. The latte tastes mostly like a hot or a hot coffee. But uh, I'll say this, their coffee here is better than uh, Joffrey's. <laughs> well, we can now cross off the French Street Bistro off our list of things we need to do. Here, I don't know what else to call this. I'm just gonna call it Europe. I mean, obviously we're in France right now. Take a stroll around here for a little bit. Actually, as we come up on Super Silly Funland, that's that I took that right turn to do our construction coverage. It just occurred to me. It's Saturday. They had 50 guys on that site working like mad on a Saturday. I don't, well, I don't go to the parks a lot, Disneyland that is, on Saturday, but I've been on a few Sundays and I don't see them there. So maybe they are there, but I just think that's cool. They're trying really, really hard. I don't know if I've mentioned that or not, but I think that's cool. <laughs> the minions are cool. <laughs> they are. What is happening at Secret Life of Pets off the leash? This is a great example, by the way. Oh, I, I can you hear the minions back there. This attraction is a great example of it not being necessary for the guests to be familiar or even like the IP that is being used for an attraction. I mean, personally speaking, at least, I've never even seen Film. I tried to watch it once, but I couldn't get into it. But I love this dark ride. I think it's a great dark ride. I get it. I understand what's happening in the film. I understand, or in the ride. And I guess that's the same premise as the film. But it's not necessary that I that I like it, the, the movie that is. So I feel like it's okay if Disney wants to, or any theme park designer wants to go ahead and take a run and just build something. That's good. You make it good and that's all that matters. Make it good first. This is part of the conversation I was having on Twitter. And everybody gets too wrapped up in uh, you know, the guest being involved or understanding or anything like that. The number one thing, the most important thing is to just make a good attraction. And I think that the Secret Life of Pets off the leash dark ride is not just good, but great. I guess we have to go to Harry Potter Town next, right? Got to go to Hogsmeade. 
I'm not going to get a butter beer, but I do have Express Lane. Maybe I'll <laughs> see if I can keep my lunch and, and, and treat down on, oh God, okay. Forbidden Journey. I always get Forbidden Journey and Flight of Passage. Confused. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't get through. My goodness. Harry Potter Town, let's go. All right. the outpost real quick. The shop is great. I do love these kind of books too. The notebooks. I have like a dozen of these of different kinds, but I've definitely, you know, I gotta take the Harry Potter quiz. I always consider myself Gryffindor, but I can't remember if I had ever took the test. I don't remember taking the test, but I feel like I would have. So should I take it again, just to make sure? Because I feel like you can't buy any merch. You can't buy any Harry Potter merch until you know definitely which house you're in. I want a keeper hat. I want a keeper hat, and I want this Sort of, I guess, I don't know what to call this, kind of sweatshirt. I want to call it a varsity sweatshirt, but it's not exactly, but I want that. I do, I like this baseball cap. But I can't buy one unless I know what house I'm in, right? I have to know. These uh, jerseys are pretty neat also. Oh, they've got a Cedric Diggory jersey. That's amazing. I kind of dig it. Ravenclaw is chain. I mean, obviously Slytherin is going to be Malfoy, of course. And Gryffindor, not Slytherin. 100% that would be me under the sorting hat, muttering to myself, not Slytherin, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> That's simple, but clever. It feels like it looks though. It's a little, it, it, it feels a little itchy. $90 merch is completely unaffordable these days. I honestly don't know how anybody can be a fan <laughs> these days with the way price things are priced. Incredible, $90 for that. Is that $90 worth of love? I don't know but maybe I could find my way to spending $90 on this sweatshirt. Although again, this looks or feels kind of itchy, but I love the style. <laughs> okay, come on, man, $110? I mean, that's just a no on principle. On principle alone. I don't care how good it is, how much I love Harry Potter, any of that. That's just a no on principle. But you got me there, man. That thing is a beauty. <laughs> that is a beauty. Whew. Well done, Universal. And that says 70 minutes right now, standby. We got our backstage passes.
They do have a single rider here. bummer about using express is that you miss all this pretty shit stuff man just like at uh transformers i missed the whole queue to the front. We just saved 70 minutes. Like of all the Harry Potter things I think I'd want that to be near the top of the list with the sorting hat. That's for short. That's me, by the way. I am the weak stomach. But I do it anyway because it's so well done. You know, the, the, the practical parts of it are just fantastic. The Dementors and the, and, the, and the tree and the spiders and all that. Oh, my God, it's so good. So good. And I love Harry Potter. Uh, so I can't say no. But heaven, man, they, got you like, they got you like on your back at certain points. Incredible. Hello. 
Whatever shortcomings Three Broomsticks has as a dining location, and I'm not saying that the food is bad, I'm just saying it may not be everybody's cup of tea. But if there are any shortcomings, they sure make up for it in aesthetic. That's just a delight to be in there, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. That makes up for a lot. That's cool. <laughs> That's really, this is one of those places where you're just happy to be here. This is. Disneyland, right? Harry Potter Town? Uh, Hogsmeade? It's the only place, well, I guess maybe uh, Super Fresh Nintendo World. Oh, thank you, thank you. Maybe Super Nintendo World, but that land isn't big enough yet to get to that. Because you can't just let yourself be in Nintendo World. It's too busy, it's too small. But here you can kind of, you know, open yourself up a little bit and just be there. A lot of things to do, a lot of stores. What's up, guys? Uh, you've, got, you've got the food, you've got the, the gift shops. Oh, I forgot, we gotta go back in there. Here I am walking out doing my leaving Harry Potter bit, but I gotta go to Honey, or, uh, Honey Dukes. I always go to Honey Dukes at least once before I leave. Um, but there's that, you know, there's a lot of things that keep you in Hogsmeade where you, and, you're just, and you're just happy to be there. I'm just happy to be inside of Honey Dukes. I was gonna do a little shopping, but this caught my eye. Right away, they have closed off the entire back half. The gift shop portion of Honey Dukes. So right about here, they used to have the, the display case where you could get all your treats. Fudge and all that stuff. That's gone because they're, they're doing the thing back there. Quarters in here, so I'm gonna have to escape before I can have this conversation. <laughs> but it's so, it's so tight in here. Uh, it sounds like they're gonna be putting in uh, an ice cream shop instead of the gift shop. Where the gift shop was, they're gonna put an ice cream shop. I am agreeable to that. That sounds great. Back out in the main street, and there's our, as Liz would call them, the dragons, the fast and furious dragons. I can't believe we got here. I, that's kind of, I think that's our day. Good update here from Universal. Gotta say, got a lot done, got a lot covered, a lot of construction happening. Universal's coming up, love being here. Energy was great, crowds were great, cast was great. I'm gonna call him cast, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Hey guys, I want a lot of fans here saying hi to me at Universal where it's not my home. Even cast. That was great. Uh, hopefully we'll come back here in about another month. Or, well, I, you know what? In the meantime, we may also be making a, a I was hoping to make a, a notch trip on, uh, on Thursday, but that didn't quite happen. But we're going back to knots here real soon. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for more from Universal. And of course, stay tuned for more from Disneyland. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. Otherwise, you can follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked. On Twitter at freshbaked, see that's fresh with no E. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind of under there, freshbaked.